Hi, it's the Iris Shifty here to give you your January 2016 mid-month reading. I continue to use the Gilded Tarot deck, and even though this focuses more on the last half of the month and the month in general, I'm still going to be using the same eight-card spread uh, so as to give as in-depth a look as possible at what the remainder of the month might be bringing us. Uh, these are general readings, so if they don't apply or resonate the same with everyone, I remind you to also check your rising and your moon sign as well. A special thank you to those of you who are keeping me so busy with personal readings. Uh, my thanks go out to each and every one of you. I won't forget either yourselves or your stories. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so very much. And a continued thank you to those of you who watch and follow and listen and subscribe to my channel. Uh, your feedback uh, has been, in the greater part, quite positive and very welcome. So thank you so very much for that. Uh, I am offering also uh, yearly overviews and outlooks for the year of 2016. So if you're interested in those or any of the other personal readings that I offer, you can click on the About sign on my channel's homepage, and it will give you a little more detail about myself, the services I offer, and my contact information, uh, which is Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. So let's get right into this reading. This is for Gemini. January 2016, mid-month. Gemini, the twin. What does the remainder of this month hold for you? Gemini, January 2016, mid-month. Gemini, January 2016, mid-month. Gemini, Gemini, mid-month, January. Okay, we have the Seven of Wands, followed by the Four of Swords, the World card, followed by the Six of Pentacles, the Queen of Swords, that's you, followed by the Lovers, and the Two of Cups, followed by the Justice card. Now let's just take a look at this. Wow, what an interesting reading. Okay, let's begin. Sorry about any of the long pauses in any of my videos, um, but sometimes it just takes me a minute to kind of put together the things that come into my, my mind and my intuition, and uh, sometimes uh, they come very quickly, so I need to take a minute to kind of sort them out. My crazy gypsy hair is out of control today. So we begin with the Seven of Wands. Wands, the element being that of fire and air, and wands is a suit that points to uh, change, movement, action, power, creativity. It can also point to new, a new projects or career-oriented uh, things as well, um, and travel too. The Seven of Wands I see primarily as a defense card. It shows a man who's standing in front of the door to his keep or his castle, his property, something that belongs to him, something that he feels uh, very invested in, has a sense of ownership in because it's his, he's worked for it, it belongs to him. And he's standing in front of it holding uh, one of the wands in a very defensive sort of posture because it looks like he's being challenged by uh, these six other sort uh, wands that are coming at him. And this is a card that points to um, defending what is yours, uh, Gemini. It looks like somewhere around the middle of this month, um, and of course, the timeline of the cards is not clearly definitive in beginnings and endings. This could be something that's occurring throughout the month of January and bleeding into a little of February as well. But it looks like, uh, Gemini, you're going to be find yourself in a place where you feel, um, if you're not actually defending, so you're either defending something that you feel very strongly about, that you have some kind of sense of ownership about um, because you've invested in it, you've worked very hard for it, you've built it up, it's yours. Um, if it's not your actual home, you know, being threatened in some way, maybe by foreclosure or something like that. Although I'm not really, not really getting that 
uh, any other property cards here, but it could resonate that, that way for a smaller portion of you. But this is a card of defending what's yours, of standing up for something. This card also points to standing up for something you believe in very firmly, whether it's um, a set of ideals or a belief system or something that you, you've worked very hard for. It's something that you feel belongs to you. You have a sense of ownership about it and you're you, it feels like you're at a place where you're um, you're defending that. This is also a card that points to um, holding the fort, standing by what you believe in, standing your ground, staying the course, not giving up, and not giving in. Uh, so, Gemini, it looks like when you find yourself in this position, the advice of this card is to stand your ground. Um, this is not a card that implies being overly assertive in attacking or being the aggressor, but it just... It points to defending what's yours, standing by what you believe in, holding your course, and not giving in. So um, whatever situation you find yourself in where this applies or resonates for you, um, this card speaks of, um, of standing for what you believe in and standing your ground if you've made a decision about something and that decision is being challenged, or a set of beliefs or ideals or, or ethics that you, 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 you live your life by. And they're being challenged somehow. This card points to um, to standing your ground and defending what you believe in and defending what's yours. If there's something of yours that's actually being threatened, whether it's your home or your job or something like that, this card speaks of defending it, not being the aggressor, but just of defending it and standing by what you believe in. Now, <clears throat> this is a company. That card is accompanied by the four of swords. Swords is the the element being that of air. And swords is a suit that points towards our thoughts, our ways of thinking, our perspective, our logic, our reasoning. Uh, this shows a, a man who is girded for battle. He has either just come from a battle or he's taking a break in the middle of battle. There are three swords pointing down at him and another one resting close by his hand should he need it. Uh, but for the time being, he is not engaged with them. He's taking a time out. This is a card of rest. Set. This is a card of rest and of peace. This also is a card that, that touches um, a little bit uh, in subtle ways of going within and of seeking out uh, divine intuition or divine guidance or um, perhaps advice from a trusted spiritual advisor uh, in regards to something. But the primary, um, the, this card primarily points to rest, to taking a time out. So it looks like uh, Gemini, whatever, whatever situation or position you find yourself in where you feel like you're you're having to defend something, you're having to stand up for yourself or stand up for something you believe in, even if that's another individual, um, stand up for something that you, you have a sense of ownership and a sense of investment in. It looks like this is something that you've put a lot of energy into and that you're tired. This card speaks of, um, of needing to take a time out, of needing to take a rest and a rest and then to take care of yourself. Um, and this card speaks of also of mental conflict, of really just feeling where you're at a place where you just feel kind of worn out from your thoughts, from spending so much time and energy dwelling on something. So uh, paired with the Seven of Wands, I think this looks like it's been quite, um, quite a struggle for you, quite a mental drain, and you find yourself at a place somewhere maybe around the mid-January. Um, mid where um, it looks like you just you really need to take a time out, you really need to take a step back, get some rest, get some insight and clarity before you go back into whatever it is this is. Now, that's followed by the World card, paired with the Six of Pentacles. Great combination. The World card is a major arcana card, and you have um, one, two, three, four, I don't know if I mentioned at the beginning, but the card that you pulled as your overall theme, general advice and guidance of the month is the Empress card. I always pull a card from the bottom of the deck for that. I, I have a feeling I forgot to say it, but you got the Empress card. So <clears throat> we have the World card followed by the Six of Pentacles. The World card is a major arcana card, and this card speaks of being at a place of achievement. This card speaks of, um, I always get the sense of it being uh, kind of, not really at the end of a road, but having the analogy that it's always in my head is of climbing a mountain, and it's been quite a quite a path, quite a journey, quite a struggle to get up there, and the world represents being at the top of that mountain, and looking back at everything you've done, and everything you've accomplished, and how far you've come, and 
and all the hard work that you've put into something and feeling just a real sense of achievement and fulfillment and success and feeling in a place where you feel like it's all been worth it. There's a sense of wholeness and a sense of, um, of integration and um, of balance and harmony. This card speaks of, um, it can speak of success and triumph as well, but it just speaks of, of a sense of achievement. Um, if it's not an actual win or an actual success of something, it just speaks of being in a place where you're looking back at everything that you've been through or that you've put into something and feeling a real sense of achievement and accomplishment over something. Now, it's paired with the Six of Pentacles. Pentacles, the element being that of Earth, of tangible, rooted, grounded, grounded things. And Pentacles is a suit that uh, points towards uh, typically money, finances, resources, property, assets. It can also point to job and career. Um, this shows a man who is um, taking all the things that he has, all the gifts that he has or that belong to him, pentacles, whether that's actual money or resources or time, and he's throwing them out the window um, towards these waiting, grasping hands. This card can point to... Um, being given a gift, this card can point to being the person who is on the philanthropic side of actually giving giving away gifts. So it could be Gemini that um, after this struggle and conflict where you've really had to just stand up for something that you believe in or defend something that you've put a lot of effort and work and investment in, and you find yourself in a place of feeling like you've really achieved something, you feel quite accomplished and quite fulfilled, and it could be that you're in a place where you're now making the decision to give back in some way. The cautionary piece of advice of this card would be to um, pay attention if this is you giving something away or being charitable or some kind of offering something to somebody, a gift of some kind of, your, of what you possess. The cautionary piece of advice of this card would be to pay attention to where those pentacles are actually um, falling because the man in this card is not. He's just kind of throwing them out willy-nilly. He's not looking to see if who catches them or if anybody catches them or if they're just falling um, by the side of the road. So the advice of this card would be also to be careful not to um, not to give uh, to the point where um, it's being wasted or being unnoticed or, or not being appreciated. This card can sometimes speak, um, and particularly in relationships, of investing more than you're actually getting back in return, although I'm not getting that particular sense in this reading. But... Um, for those for whom it resonates and you are actually in a place where you feel very charitable and you're giving of yourself or your, your money or your resources somehow, to pay attention and be careful about where you're giving it, who you're giving it to, and um, that it's actually going to some good. But it, it's, a, it's a great combination of cards. And for some of you, it can represent, um, you know, feeling this sense of achievement after coming through this conflict and this defensive posture. And you're also, you, you yourself are being given the gift of, um, uh, either actual finances or resources or, or assets, some, something, something tangible. <clears throat> now, we follow that with the Queen of Swords, which I see is you, and the Lover's card. Um, now, swords, uh, swords, again, the element is that of air, and you are an air sign, Gemini. Uh, the Queen of Swords is, uh, queens, uh, like the kings, are someone who has reached the mastery of their suit. And as swords represent our thoughts, uh, our reasoning, our logic, um, and they can also represent truth as well. The Queen of Swords is actually someone for whom truth is very important. She's a truth seeker. She is all about things being illuminated and things being revealed. Um, this is a person who is has reached the mastery of her thoughts and her emotions. This is someone who may tend to be a little more on the cerebral side. For those of you for whom you don't feel this resonates with you, although I, I think this is you. You've showed up in your own reading, which is always a fabulous sign. Um, this is a person who is very thoughtful and who tends to make decisions that come from a more cerebral place and a more emotional place. Uh, in the reverse, she can be a bit of a wench, but she's fallen in the upright position. She's a very cool, calm, collected sort of person, a very logical person, an incredibly intelligent person and an intuitive person too. It's someone who's very balanced. She can sometimes, or he, can sometimes come across as um, a kind of aloof and detached. Um, but honestly, the, the personality of this card in the upright position is somebody who's just in control of their, their thought processes. 
that they can utilize them and tap them without allowing themselves to be swayed one way or the other by the emotions of a situation. So um, for those of you that you don't feel like this resonates for you as showing up as you, it could represent a person in your life or a person who's coming into your life. Uh, but I really see this first and foremost for the majority of you as you yourself. And um, it's just always great when you pop up in your own reading. It's a very strong sign. Good for you, Gemini. Now, the Queen of Swords is accompanied by the Lover's card. So this, this coupling of cards can play out a couple of different ways. This card could represent, um, and I think for some of you it will, <clears throat> Um, an actual union between you and another individual on a, on a love romantic um, sort of basis. And I say this too because it's followed by the two, of, this coupling of cards is followed by the two of cups and the justice card, all in the upright position. The lover's card speaks of a union between two people. Um, if this were more business, uh, finance related, it can just speak of a union between companies or negotiations and contracts. Um, but I feel... Gemini, that for you, this actually represents a union between you and someone else. And for those of you who are not in an established relationship with someone, who are single and looking for someone, or are just kind of in the early stages of dating, this is somebody that's going to be coming into your life. This represents a union that goes way beyond um, just the physical, chemical attraction of, of being drawn and attracted to somebody. This is a, a union that speaks of, uh, that has an element of divinity in it, a divine union, so to speak. You can see that um, this man and this woman are both in water and in the air, and there's a light shining down from above um, that connects all of these elements together, and it speaks of a union that uh, it speaks of a soulmate, a partner union. You have the soulmate card, too, which is the two of cups. You have the lovers and the two of cups in the same reading. That's just fabulous. This speaks of um, your soulmate, the perfect person for you. Not the perfect person, no such thing exists, but um, the perfect match for you, someone with whom you um, you just fit. All the nooks and crannies fit together, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. This can also represent um, having to make a choice. For some of you for whom this does not resonate at all, this can also mean um, that you, as the Queen of Swords, have a choice to make. Um, about a union of some kind, it can also perhaps refer to making a choice about whatever this initial conflict and defensive stuff was in the beginning. Um, although I'm getting first and foremost, it, it, it's a love, it's some kind of love, intimate connection, or something like a, like a kind of a soulmate, best friend, something like that. Some very, very, very heart connected, um, just a, a beautiful, perfect union. So how lovely to see that for those of you for whom it represents having to make a choice about something. Um, it looks like the advice would be to be who you are and to be very thoughtful about it. Um, uh, it's just it's coming through as, as love very strongly and very loudly. So now that is followed by the Two of Cups, the Lovers and the Two of Cups, and the Justice card in the upright position. So this looks just absolutely beautiful, Gemini. The Two of Cups, Cups the element being that of water, and Cups is a suit that points to love, relationships, our emotions. The Two of Cups represents soulmate connection. This represents um, finding someone, again, with the Lovers. It, it's like you have everything. You have not only having a lot of things in common, you're very comfortable with each other, um, you have an intuitive uh, understanding of each other, there's love there, there's the physical and chemical stuff, but there's also attraction on a divine level, there's a, a certain sense of, uh, of karmic destiny in this union. Um, I rarely ever see the lovers on the two of cups in the same reading, and, and almost never t together following each other like this. There is a, a very strong sense of karmic connection, almost kind of just being kind of a thread between you and whoever this individual is um, in your life or about to come into your life. And um, it's just a very beautiful, beautiful union, a very beautiful connection um, on all levels. This is a, a union that goes far beyond just an earthly one. So um, that's a wonderful thing. Now you have another major arcana card. We have the justice card in the upright position. Now, justice speaks of um, 
of reaping what you sow, of getting out of something what you put into it, justice being blind, implying that the outcome of a certain situation, and it looks like it's this union, is going to depend completely and solely on the actions of the people involved. Um, whatever you sow, that is what you will reap. Um, if you put out good intentions, that's what you're going to get back. If you put out intentions that are not so good, that's what's going to come back. And Justice Cardin, it's fallen in the upright position, and it looks like the sense that I'm getting is that this, this union that, that is occurring or, or is about to occur somewhere towards the last half of January or the beginning of February, it looks, the, the sense I'm getting is that it's, it's a divine, it's just divine. I'm getting just a very strong sense that you two are meant to be together, that you're being brought together for a certain reason. This union is completely cradled and blessed by God, spirit, divine, whatever your spiritual structure is. And it looks like it's just a beautiful thing. And I almost want to say, you know, it's something you deserve. But I think everyone, um, just about everyone is deserving of this kind of love that's walking the earth today. But there's something about a karmic justice in this that not only a divine guidance and blessing, but some kind of karmic justice in this. And I don't know, perhaps, if it connects to the beginning of the reading where you, you had to stand up for something you believed in or stand by something you believed very strongly in or, or held to be yours. Um, and at the end, what's coming is um, that somehow what you stood up for and what you stood by for and what you put into and hoped for is actually paying off somehow in this union. I'm, I'm not actually sure how that resonates or connects to those of you Geminis who are watching this or why I felt compelled to say that, but I do. <laughs> so I did. Um, but it looks like just a wonderful, beautiful sort of thing. And perhaps it's something that you fought for before and it's finally coming to pass. It's finally coming to fruition. Um, and it just, it, it's blessed. It's absolutely blessed, and there's a kind of justice in it as well. Now, the cards you have is an overall theme, general feeling. For the remainder of the month, we have the Empress card, another major arcana card. And again, we have one, two, three, four. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Plus the lovers and the two of cups. Um, looks like it's just your turn, Gemini. What a beautiful reading this has been. The overall theme and feeling being the Empress. And the, card, the words associated with this card are fertility, abundance, love, sensuality, nurturing, um, fertility, being, uh, having fertile ground is the ground when it's, when it's at the perfect, it's, it's, it's in the perfect state, it's ready for, it's at the perfect uh, uh, state for seeds to be planted in it, um, the soil is ready, seeds can be planted for everything to, to grow and, nour and, and flourish and, nour and be nourishing and be nourished by, um, and I think that I'm just getting a very strong sense, Gemini, that, and this feels very specific to someone, I don't understand it, I'm just reading it, but it feels like this union, this beautiful thing that's happening for you, has been in the works for a while, that, that there, I'm still getting a connection back to the beginning, that if it's something you fought for, something you defended, something maybe even you struggled to hang on to hope for, but somehow, somehow it's happening for you. It's divinely blessed, it's divinely guided, and it's and there's a karmic justice in it for you. And um, it just has an, an aura and a spirit of abundance and fertility and beautiful, loving sensuality and nurturing energy around it. What an absolutely gorgeous reading, uh, Gemini. How happy I am to deliver a reading like this to you. Um, I'm excited to see how this uh, plays out you know, for you in the next month in February when I do the February reading, for those of you for whom this resonated. And for those of you for whom it did, if you feel like sharing uh, how this particular reading resonated for you, I would love to hear about it. Uh, and for those for whom it didn't, um, I'm sorry, please check your rising and your moon sign as well. Um, if any of you would like an extension of this reading or you would like to schedule a personal reading with me, uh, again, just click on the About button on my channel's homepage or email me at maggie, the number one, mcguire at gmail.com. I hope that this reading has given you some wisdom and some insight and clarity and uh, some very beautiful things to look forward to. So thank you very much for watching, Gemini, and as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy, happy life. Bye.